You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 22nd, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where everyone is in the loop, it's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drip Glass. Hey, sweetie. How you doing? Oh, you're, you're under the weather? I am. And and there's T- more sad news, right? It's a, it's a tough week. Um. I'm going to dedicate the show to my my wonderful mom, Shirley. Uh, Shirley Buchanan, we got some very tough news this week about my mom. Um, I'll tell you all more about it later when what happens happens. Uh, but it's not good, and it's not going to get better. So please keep us in your thoughts, and I appreciate all the positive energy and prayers and kind words we've gotten so far. And that's all yeah. I'm going to talk about right now. Yeah. Dedicate it to your mom, for sure. Yeah. I. You got to dedicate it to hospice workers as well. Yeah. Uh, best, best people in the world. Yeah. Just, we've been dealing all week with with good people, uh, right. watching good people do re- do good things, um, mm. and also witnessing a lot of very bad people. Yes, do very bad <laughs> things. Uh, seems it seems like a very uh, clarifying mm-hmm. week for for anyone who is on the fence at this point. Um, yeah. There's no fence anymore. No, it, I feel like the fence is burned down. The um the good people for the most part work for modest wages for yeah. because what the work they do is important and the bad people work for incredibly high wages and they're evil. And mm-hmm. it's pretty simple. That's a pretty simple divide. Mm-hmm. Um this week's episode is also brought to us by one of our oldest sponsors. Uh, the where the good lord split you emergency farewell party planners who are very excited to announce a brand new product line, the Forgive and Forget, especially Forget, Cake and Bourbon Pundit Combo. Are you a major media corporation who's had to give one of your Republican pundits a time out for screwing up very badly in public? Well, now it's time to rehabilitate their career once again and get them back into the rotation. The good people at Where the Good Lord Split You have just the thing for your welcome back to the fold festivities. Visit the website today and order your personalized Forgive and Forget, especially Forget, Cake and Bourbon Pundit Combo. Offer code Steve Schmidt. And they're working on a almost commit perjury and fly off to Brussels package yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, because sure. you're a millionaire and you can do that. Yeah. But they haven't gotten that package quite together yet. Well, <laughs> well Susie Bright, who we've met in person. Oh, yeah. She's was, wonderful. <laughs> excuse me. Was asking online this week, why is Gordon Sondland smirking so much? Mm-hmm. The answer is... He's a rich white asshole who's going to yeah. uh, be able to say, <laughs> I didn't do perjury because I changed my mind. And yeah. then walk, burn uh, burn a whole bunch of assholes behind him, walk away scot-free, and go back to being a, a multimillionaire. Yep. So last week it was Bill Taylor, George Kentz, and Marie Yovanovitch giving testimony. This week it was Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman. And fortunately he reminded Republicans on the uh, committee that he's Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. Mm-hmm. Um, he was, he is top Ukraine specialist on the National Security Council. He's a thing. He's uh-huh. a person, uh, as 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 middle child used to say when she was about ten. I'm a person. Yeah, he's a person and a, a very he's a person. Uh, he's an illustrious uh, person. Purple heart yeah. winning, impressive yep. as hell, honorable, upright man. And they tried to smear him all week. Yep. Uh, and and last week as well, uh, Jennifer Williams, the Foreign Service aide, who's detailed. This is I love this detail. Mm-hmm. She's with Vice President Pence's office right. right now. Right. And both of them were on the July twenty fifth call yeah. with the, Trump and Zelensky, which was perfect. Let me emphasize: perfect call, yeah. perfect in yeah. every way. Well, and this screwed over the whole argument of three minutes ago that all of this is hearsay. Yeah. And then came uh, the Republican witnesses. Yes. Again, this is another hilarious detail. The, the witnesses that Republicans asked to have come. Uh-huh. Kurt Volker, former special envoy to Ukraine, and Tim Morrison, former National Security Council aide. Again, these people 
are have security clearance. Uh -huh. They are professionals. Mm -hmm. These are people who know their subject matter. They are there to provide expertise, their personal expertise yep. to the White House. They are there because the White House wants them there, wants their expertise. And, and a, a, an important note, um, the, the existence of these two underscores the fact that Republicans get to call whoever they want. They can't call right. insane people. They can't, you know, call up um, Bill O'Reilly, uh, Hillary Clinton's aunt. You know, that, that's no Adam Schiff said, no, no, no. You, you have a whole list of clowns and idiots. We're not going to let you call witness, but you can call fact witnesses. You can call people who know what they're talking about. Who are connected yeah. to Ukraine and the call and are germane to the subject sure. matter at hand. Call, Absolutely. Call anybody you think is going to vindicate Donald Trump. Right. And the list of people Donald Trump has refused to allow to testify is much, 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 much longer than the star witnesses, and there were two of them, or three, who turned out to be, you know, of no help whatsoever. Right. So, and then came Gordon, and you called him Ned Ryerson from Groundhog Day. Ned? Ned? <laughs> Ned Ryerson? That sounds like him, too. Yeah, Gordon Sondland, smug asshole. <laughs> she yeah. said, thank goodness there was an Irishman on the committee. Yeah. Uh, to call him out. Uh, Laura Cooper, David Hale, and David Holmes. And also Fiona Hill, who uh, played the part of full metal bitch Angel of Verdun. <laughs> if yes. you're familiar with that for those, movie. <laughs> for those of the Edge of Tomorrow fans. Yeah, she uh, sure was. She, she was amazing. She was amazing. And no, this is not an insult. This is a no, very this high is compliment. Honor, we are honoring her mm -hmm. with the term full metal bitch Angel of Verdun. If you've seen yeah. that movie... Uh, Edge of Tomorrow, uh, she's a hero, a heroine, mm -hmm. and uh, not to be toyed with, and not no. she did not come to play. No. And uh, she called out Republicans yeah, on did. topic directly, mm -hmm. telling them to their faces, you are repeating Russia disinformation. Right. And please stop it. She actually asked them to stop. Of course, they're not going to stop. Donald Trump was on Fox and Friends this morning for over 50 minutes yep. repeating Russia disinformation because he believes it, because he's, right. he's stupid and narcissistic, and it fits his narrative to say so. And Brian Kilmeade and Steve Ducey found the carpeting and the tips of their shoes very interesting for all 50 <laughs> minutes. But yes, the dear did. leader is on the phone, and I guess we're mm -hmm. just going to have to listen to him ramble on about crowd strike and Ukraine and conspiracy. And, you know, everyone says this. You know, that's what the word is. Well, and it's just, it really is exhausting. It's it just is exhausting fucking exhausting. And, and sad and, mm -hmm. and not something that we're sitting here cheering that finally Donald Trump's no. been outed. I mean, we, we knew that his crimes were going to come to the surface. Sure. That, well, that's not, I wrote, I, I did a series of tweets yesterday, just hashtag throwback Thursday, my tweets from 2017 saying, yeah. I have no doubt his crimes are going to come to the surface, right. but a complicit media and a complicit Republican party aren't going to do anything about it. I'm also right. equally sure that that's the case. So Donald Trump, on Fox and Friends and Steve Ducey, it's news when Steve Ducey says, really? To Donald really? Trump. Really? And then Donald Trump's confirmation of his innocence is, I watched Fox News all day yesterday right. and five people told me I was wonderful. Five people told and, and this is the equivalent, I've used this before, of Lassie, you know, questioning Timmy. Like, <laughs> you know, and Timmy, and imagine Timmy just snaps off a branch and beats the crap out of, out of Lassie. That's what happened on Fox News. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. you know, just like really, is that really true? And just, and they, and of course, you're right. The the people that Donald Trump cited as his character witnesses were five assholes on Fox News, right? Because it's a completely self contained closed system. There's no, and he has nothing to do all day except no. watch Fox. No. So, yeah. so I mean, the idea that that any one of these people who were splendid, Fiona Hill is awesome. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was amazing. Bill Taylor last week was amazing. Uh, all of these people were were upright and wonderful. But the idea that these were just more nails in Donald Trump's coffin is silly because now it's just a coffin made entirely of nails. There is right. no, absolutely no doubt in the minds of anyone who is not Fox News poisoned that, that Donald Trump committed um, massive uh, violations of his oath of office, uh, did it uh, for corrupt purposes, for personal gain. Uh, did it in front of a whole bunch of people who are all equally complicit. 
to uh, to wreck the upcoming election and to destroy a political opponent. There's no doubt about that. And mm-hmm. and here's the thing: his entire party is completely cool with that. The yeah. the right. last decent Republican who, who I who I, I thought you know shitting yourself in indecision doesn't mean you're a good person. It means you're too scared of to do the right thing. Um, to do the right thing, but you're willing to show that you're thinking about it. You know, that's Will Hurd. And, and this week, Will Hurd decided, you know, I, I, I realize I'm retiring from Congress and I, I could take a stand and this is all very disturbing, but it's not really impeachable. So don't let anyone tell you that, that there's some sort of unharvested group of decent Republicans out there who can be mm-hmm. reasoned with or bargained with or you can negotiate with or compromise with. I'm talking to you, Joe Biden. There aren't any. There are no good Republicans. They're all bad. They're all varying degrees of bad, but they're all bad. So let's just get over the fact that there's never going to be a conviction in the Senate because the Senate is run by evil men. Mm-hmm. And let's right. move on to the fact that that we have one party in this country that is really trying to install a dictator right in front of us. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing we now have to cope with. And and I was pleased to see certain people, um, particularly Chris Hayes, uh-huh. really struggle to find a way to insert that, what you just said, yeah. into the conversation with Brian Williams yeah. without losing his job. Yeah. To say, look, there's there's one party that is just a tornado yes. of lies and conspiracy. But what about theories. Democrats in disarray, Blue Gal? Yeah, right, uh-huh. right. And and saying normal politics is debating uh, status quo healthcare versus what we as a society choose to do and what we choose to pay for, and having that debate is what normal politics looks like. Yeah, and. That's this is what Chris Hayes said, and then you have this Devin Nunez tornado, you know, of lies, conspiracy theories, and disinformation, mm-hmm. and that is not normal. No. Uh, I'm going to read what Brian Broderick in BuzzFeed said. That's a lot of alliteration, but <laughs> Ryan Broderick, excuse me, Ryan Broderick in BuzzFeed. But there are two impeachments unfolding in the nation's capital. One carried out by the Democrats is designed to ascertain the truth as to whether Trump sought a quid pro quo deal with Ukraine to get the country to investigate Joe Biden and the 2016 presidential election in exchange for aid money. The other, being carried out simultaneously by the Republicans, is quite different. Instead of trying to learn the truth, it seeks to create not just a counter narrative, but a completely separate reality. Each round of GOP questioning is not meant to interrogate the witnesses, which today included Sondland, but instead to create moments that can be flipped into Fox News segments, shared as bite-sized Facebook posts, or dropped into 4chan threads. Their alternate universe, built from baseless online conspiracy theories and reading the tea leaves of Trump's Twitter feed, dominates Fox News and Facebook. And the Republican strategy, as confusing and bizarre as it may seem to those on the outside, is working. And I don't know. I did. This is you put this in our notes, and I don't have don't have the context of this whole article. But this creating Fox News clips in a hearing has been going on since before Obama was president. Since uh, since you had Fox News people in Iraq sticking microphones in soldiers' right. faces saying, say Fox rocks, say Fox rocks. Right. I mean, this has been their business model forever, for 20 years now. Well, and the whole Benghazi, the reason they had seven Benghazi hearings is because it was to provide content right. for Fox News to diminish to get, Hillary Clinton's it's standing. To get uh, uh-huh. Sean Hannity off of Kevin McCarthy's back. Um, and, right. and so today, right. Right. Um, Peggy Noonan, of all people, Yes. This is a direct quote from her. As to impeachment itself, the case has been so clearly made, you wonder what exactly the Senate will be left doing. How will they hold a lengthy trial with a case this clear? Who exactly will be the president's witnesses? Now, on the one hand, this does renew my faith that if you pin a Republican Beltway pundit down long enough and just keep <laughs> punching them in the face with terrified facts about their party and refusing to let them look away over and over and over again, eventually they will sue for peace. Eventually, they'll squeak out, uncle, uncle, I give up. 
it's bad. Okay, it's bad. Um, and then, of course, like a slug in a bucket of salt, they will find a way to wriggle out and go back to being their wretched selves the minute Donald Trump is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, I would remind people that it is almost exactly a decade ago when Peggy Newton and Cokie Roberts and George Stephanopoulos mm-hmm. and George Will, I found this in the Crooks and Liars archives, by oh, the way. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Uh, we're all suddenly uh, shocked to discover that uh, the Bush administration tortured people. Mm-hmm. And they were all of a like mind that we should just ignore this. <laughs> we should yep. just we should just not talk about this. We should just ignore this. And Peggy Newton was like, you know, sometimes history should be mysterious. Yeah. And sometimes That's really should... what she said on the she Sunday really shows. Yeah. And, she, and, and here's the thing. This was a decade ago. And, and Cokie Roberts was just as bad. George Will was just as bad. Uh, George Stephanopoulos, with fucking coward, was nearly as bad. All these people still have their jobs yeah. a decade later. And so Peggy Newton was like, you know, a great country, sometimes you just have to walk on by. You just have to walk on by. As long as they promise not to do it again. You know, and now that George Bush is gone and Obama's in office uh, and, and everyone promises not to do it anymore, we can just put this in the past and forget about it and not talk about it. And you know what? Letting Republicans get away with shit like that is how we ended up with Donald Trump. Letting creeps and and scum like like george stephanopoulos and peggy noonan and george will keep their jobs after they waded through shit for for a decade to call liberals traitors during the bush administration and sided with every republican lie during the, the obama administration letting those people keep their jobs and, and command the public stage all these years is how we got trump so i don't give a shit that, that peggy noonan now feels bad and is like shocked to discover that her party's full of Republicans. I really, really want to know from people who run media organizations where the fuck they get off having Peggy Newton on their op-ed page to begin with. Now, I'm never going to get that answer. And I, I realize that. I've, I've come to terms with that. I've, I've begun the grieving process over that years ago. Right. But it is still a very salient question, which is now that we all understand, now that we're all up to speed, now that we all agree that liberals were right about the right all along, even though you can't say it or your mouth will burst into flames, mm-hmm. what do we do? Now we have a third of this country who wants a dictatorship, who, who despises democracy and, and wants to give their dear leader unlimited power to do whatever the fuck you he wants. S- you said that to me this morning, and I was really kind of shocked by it uh-huh. because it's true. It is true. Absolutely the Republican true. Party would like to have Donald Trump be president for life. They would love it. They would love it. Because he is exactly who they've always wanted. A loudmouth, <laughs> bigoted madman who will kick the shit out of anyone they don't like. And with no consequences to them. That is, and keep the brown people out yeah, of their country. Yeah, well, and yeah. get rid of the, the queers and the, the, the mm-hmm. liberals and the mouthy women and all the people that, that they hate. If Donald Trump cannot be impeached and removed from office for what he has done, then he will never be impeached or removed from office for anything. And he anything could, he's done. He could yep. sit up on – I've told this before. That he could sit up on the Truman Balcony – uh, machine gunning tourists and the republican party would say well what are you gonna do you know what are you gonna do and go well, and why is he shooting the people right someone actually said that to to allison camarota mm-hmm. well shoot somebody on fifth avenue why did he shoot him yeah i need to know why before i can make a judgment so of donald trump so the yes. the the question is no longer can republicans be safe they can't they're gone they're dead from the neck up they're happy to be that way they're never coming back you can stop treating them as if they were decent human beings and fellow citizens because they're not. They're a fifth column for Russia. So the yeah, question – I mean you just gave Donald Trump license to kill. Yes, you did. In your book. Yes, you yeah. did. And, and, you're, and you're happy about it. This mm-hmm. is not something, well, you know, we got to do this because the terrorists are going to win or we got to do this because yeah, the right. economy is really bad. It's like, no, this is what we've always wanted. Republicans yeah. have always wanted a fascist dictator they could goose step along behind. They've always wanted this. And now they've got it. And now the people that help build the party are all wringing their hands going, how did this ever happen? What, my goodness, whatever happened to my dear old Republican party? And that's where we are now. So um, I, I had a exchange with uh, Jay Rosen. Uh, who follows me now, which is great. I think he unfollowed That's me nice. by mistake. And, but now we have uh, lovely, if abbreviated, Twitter conversations every now and then. <laughs> and and I, I told him, and I mean this very seriously, uh, this is a time when you really need someone with a science fiction background to, to yes. talk to talk you through this. Because science fiction is the genre of what if 
And literally, there's a story called If This Goes On. Uh, it's a story about yeah. gaming mm -hmm. out possible futures, no matter how terrifying those futures may turn out to be. Right. And you can be totally dystopian right. about it. And it's part of the genre to do that. But right. it's, it's you, right. you, the whole trick is to make a coherent, consistent, uh, believable story within the boundaries of the rules of the genre. And mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now, we re – well, for – the last 15 years, I would argue, 20 years, we have really needed someone who's deeply versed in science fiction to explain mm -hmm. on a big old whiteboard, if this happens, this happens, or if this happens, this happens, or if this happens, this happens, and game out all the possible likely outcomes of a Donald Trump um, martyrdom. Uh, mm -hmm. If he's, mm -hmm. he'll never be removed. So then what happens? If he's reelected, then what happens? If he's defeated and simply refuses to leave, then what happens? Um, yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of. And all of these are possibilities. Yes. He could fake a heart attack tomorrow sure. afternoon. And, you know, that is it within the realm of possibility. And then recover yeah. enough in six months to, uh, to get a job at Fox. Have his own show on Fox. Where he Fox. would rally right. his people right. to, to, to burn the country down. Um, right. So this right. this horrible thing that, that the Beltway media and the Republican Party have permitted to grow in our midst is now fully in flower. You, everyone can see it. And, and the people who are horrified at it need to have their eyes pinned open, clockwork orange style, forced to look at it. I Because mm -hmm. you built mm -hmm. this shit. David Frum built this shit. Right. You know, yep. Michael Gerson built this shit. And the, 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 the fact that they still have jobs in the media and their jobs these days are to, again, wring their hands and pretend, oh, my goodness, how did this ever happen, is sickening to me. Is absolutely sickening to mm -hmm. me. So, but mm -hmm. if you want to know where we're going to go, now that we all agree – that the Republican Party has announced that it plans to kill American democracy in order to save their dear leader. Um, where will things go? This is the this is the great burden and privilege I think of being liberals is nothing you and I have seen is playing out any different than the way we thought it would. Right. Right. This is all shit we've been talking about b between either pre-blogging or during our blogging years, literally for decades. Yeah, I mean, I did not predict that Donald Trump would win the election. No. No, I, I didn't. That was a shock to my system and everybody else's system. Yes. But how the Republican Party would play itself out in terms of supporting evil in order to win elections. Yeah. I mean, we knew that from Florida, right? We knew right. we've known that for a long, long time. So I want to talk for a minute about something you said to me earlier today mm -hmm. when um, Skyfall was on TV. <laughs> and the, was it about the rats? Ha yes, the Javier yeah. Bardem character. And I don't want to get into the whole rat story. If you've watched mm -hmm. the movie, you know about the rat story. Good story. But, but the the part where the villain in this movie says, um, this is not about justice or, or crime or anything else. This is about how I personally, the villain, have changed. Right. And I I don't want to take on the role of any villains here, but... I want to talk for a moment about how we as progressives and Democrats and activists have changed because of Donald Trump. Yes. And uh, how uh, <laughs> we won an election in Louisiana this week. We, we won an election in 2018. Yeah. But, but this week we right. won the we re, we won re-election for the Democratic governor of Louisiana. Yes, we did. On essentially a health care vote. Yeah. And it was a very red state, a state where Donald Trump went and had a rally and said, please don't embarrass me. Right. And he won re-election. The Democrat won re-election. Mm -hmm. As you have said to me several times this week, voting, man, voting. Vote it, you vote got to keep voting. Nothing like it. You got to keep being an activist, you've got to raise activists in your household. You've got to raise activists in your community. And I want to make sure as we progress through this nightmare and eventually, hopefully, our nation wakes up and begins to rebuild. And and you've said, you know, the the democracy and nation of our parents and grandparents is over. Yes. We have to start now building something for our children and grandchildren. Yes. Absolutely. Um, this this is definitely a French Revolution moment. Yes, it of, is. Uh, and this this is something I studied in history, where the French Revolution happened, and almost immediately, the French people started talking about the before time. Yes. 
and the after time. Yeah. And that it was such a cleaving of time between the before and after that immediately people recognize that there is a before and there is an after. And I hope people are waking up to the fact that we are not going to go back to some sort of previous normalcy. No. I hope people are rejecting that type of message. That's the Joe Biden message. Right. That, you know, oh, we're just going to elect the right person. Sure. And we can we can go. I want just want to go back to ignoring the news and politics and not have to think about it every day. I do, too. We're never going back to that. No. Your armor is on. And we're going to be these old veteran soldiers with our swords and our armor still on because right. <laughs> the wall, we're on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> And winter is coming every single day for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. We've got to have to. If we don't want a President Tom Cotton, right? What, you know, Trump can be in the ground. Mitch McConnell could be in the ground, and I'm going to be wearing blue feathers but on my head. But the disease will go merrily on. <laughs> the unless disease we stop is it. still there, right. right? You have to inoculate. You have to vaccinate. You have to fight. And uh, I love the line that you had. I mean, I want you to get into the whole David Gergen debate thing. Yeah. With, because you your writing on this is so brilliant. But maybe I'll just let you talk about that because I'm stealing your thunder. <laughs> oh, please. David Gergen. Well, you just said you said in your in your notes, Ebola doesn't want to be healed. Right. <laughs> right. It doesn't want to be healed. David, Gergen. David Gergen's like, can we get back to healing? I don't like Elizabeth Warren because she's so hectoring. And, and, and Brian Williams is like, oh, there's just this purity train that i you know makes me itchy right makes me so fat can we we really want to bring america together well like you know we want to kiss ebola right right. that's there is no way to bring to and this is what chris hayes was trying to say and still hold on to his job which is you're not going to bring to america together when one side is trying to debate health care and the other one is a tornado of conspiracy theories. Yeah. It's just you can't bring those two halves together, some no. two halves. You can't bring the 3070 nation together. That 30 percent is gone, man. It's gone. And that's that's the thing. We are we are now speculating in a science fiction kind of way mm-hmm. um, about the future, immediate future, which is tricky to do. But we're wondering, OK, um, how will the people who control our public discourse, mm-hmm. who've been lying to us, conspiring against us, and, and the both siderist nonsense they've been running for years, uh, who've let Republicans off the hook time and time again, who've, who've lectured liberals that you know, don't make Republicans mad, just accommodate them, just mm-hmm. give them whatever they want, just give them mm-hmm. half of what they want, and let me go back to sleep on my big pile of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's their plan? Because they still control the, the stage. I can't get on television. You can't get on television. So the question is, what are what's their strategy for preserving their privilege in a in a whatever the hell comes down the pipe? And there's two halves to it. I think the one is the David Gergen half. Yeah, David Gergen, who is very sad that Elizabeth Warren lectures people so much. (laughs) Right, right. He just wants to heal. And again, Ebola doesn't want to be healed. David, Ebola likes being a plague. They like being this way. And and David Gergen is just. You look stupid saying that shit on television. Now, of course, the reason he's saying it is because they need someone to say it. Well, and and he is on television in this role because he has worked for yeah. Democratic and Republican administrations well, alike. Uh, and yes. so that that brings the myth of bipartisanship back onto the stage. Yes and no. Right. I mean, he's, he's there. That's his resume. But mm-hmm. he's there because the person running CNN wants that message to be right. their no, corporate message. No, that's the message. point. Yep, right. And, no, that's and, what I was trying to say. Yeah. And it's it's very important that everyone remember, whether you hate Chris Eliza or you think David Brooks is nuts or want Brett Stevens to wander off into the weeds or what the fuck is Steve Schmidt doing back on television? Every one of these people is an employee. They yeah. were hired. They're hired to do a specific thing. They're hired to be that way. Peggy Newton is hired to be this this airheaded, obnoxious bitch from 1970 who mm-hmm. never grew up and who hates everything and looks at her nose at everyone and is just very upset that Ronald Reagan won't come back from the grave and save America. Yeah. And well, all- and I I always think of Peggy Noonan, if you don't mind me interrupting. Please. I when I was a Ten teenager, grain. I had Ten to grain. Ten grain. Yeah. <laughs> Pe- Peggy Noonan is the holy uh, owned subsidiary of Ten Grain at Mock Paper Scissors. Yes. We only comment about her with permission from Ten Grain. Mm-hmm. Okay. That said, <laughs> uh, when I was a teenager, I had to go to this uh, woman's house and pick up a piece of paper for Girl Scouts or something. 
And she was this incredibly wealthy person, not living in a house. She lived in a manor. It was unbelievable. And I walked into her house and she had literally carpeting the color of butter. Mm -hmm. It was light yellow carpeting in her living room. Uh I mean, this is so foreign from anything that I had ever seen before growing up with three kids in a house with two artists and so forth. But here is this lemon light pale yellow buttered carpet. And she's going to get me the paper and she walks into her living room and she sees an ant on the floor. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, uh, on on the carpet she said oh my goodness an ant got in my house and she goes over with the tissue and she picks up the ant before she gives me the paper or anything she's got to get this Uh bug off her perfect 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 Mm -hmm. carpeting you know where the maids have already vacuumed every morning and my dad asked me later i said i described this to my dad i said did she use the ant tissue (laughs) you know when i think of peggy noonan i think of that moment that you know, torture. We're not going to let that in onto no. my yellow carpet. No. And uh, Donald Trump is an aberration. And we will get back right. to my yellow carpet and my Chardonnay party and my my ties, as 10 grains says. And all, you know, really, it's just very unpleasant to talk about. So we don't talk about unpleasant things because that's rude. It's just and rude. And so I think one of the when I read her column this morning about impeachment, it is just rude to have so much evidence and then pretend it's not there. That's just rude. That's and I really felt like this was a lesson in Emily Post, you know, my carpet. behavior. My carpet. Right. My carpet. Mm-hmm. Look at what's going to happen to my carpet if we let Donald Trump shit on it anymore. Well, you know, one day I will, and, I will read yeah. aloud from the Harlan Ellison essay on <laughs> sex, violence, and employment, where he talks about uh, dating a woman for half a date, really. Uh, uh-huh, he, uh-huh. And he goes to pick her up. Uh, he pick- I think you've told this story before on the podcast. Yeah, probably. Actually, go and, ahead. and he goes to pick her up and and uh, he, he pulls up in his shitty car and she's in a mansion. Uh-huh. And he walks in. And, oh, my God. There's it's all white. Yeah. 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 And he walks in and she's like ready to go. And 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 there's and he walks into this, you know, expanse of white carpet. Yeah. It's just as 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 big and wide as the Sahara Desert. Mm-hmm. And there's a thin plastic runner running down the middle of it. And he steps off of it. And the girl says, don't step off the runner. <laughs> Because mom will kill me if you step off the yeah, runway. Yeah, and the yeah. furniture is all covered in white, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And she, I, I told this story already, haven't I? I think so. Yeah, that and, that was he, that relationship was doomed from day one. Well, yeah. it, it never started because um, he stepped off the runner when she wasn't there. He says, "You leave me alone for a minute. I will, I will get into mischief." And started scraping the carpet um, pile to spell out the word "fuck" with a ph. <laughs> Great Chaucerian. <laughs> and she came running in and saying, Mom, I'm not the carpet, not the carpet. And she grabbed one of those old fashioned carpet sweepers to straighten out the pile. And he's like, and he grabbed her and said, What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. And then she looked at him and said, I want you to hurt me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> and he said, You know, I, I'm not experienced, but hey, I'm game. Okay, sure. Uh, and, and smack me around a little bit. So, so he said, she was a goer. She was definitely a goer. So, and this is her mom's house, of course. Of course. So, uh, so he he gets he starts he improvises by pulling a couple of ropes down from the drapes. Oh lord! And and ties her up between the heavy sofa, and and like stakes her out like he says like a goat at a watering hole. <laughs> And then, and she goes, what are you going to do now? He says, I'm going to leave. And (laughs) and now that was a horribly cruel thing to do in retrospect. But he says, I imagine her mom coming home, looking at her staked out, looking goat in a watering hole and going, oh my God, my carpet. Yeah, right, right, right. Because the first thought of these people is the propriety. Yes, and that's Peggy Noonan. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's just unpleasant to talk about torture. I'm just not going to do that. Right. And. And you are free to delete that entire no, part. No, that's if okay. You, if you it's funny as hell. Um, <laughs> but and this is the late, the late Harlan. Ellis. Yeah. Um, but this week, uh, speaking of Brian Williams, he said, "Looping back hard." Yeah. Uh, Brian Williams brought on uh, Republican strategist Mike Murphy. Ugh. Mike Murphy, who who was, and they both just sat there scratching their heads and lamenting what Trump had done to the good old party of Ronald Reagan. If he, Reagan were alive, he'd be spinning in his grave. Well, he's not alive and he's not spinning in his Ollie grave. You mean Ollie North's Robert, Ronald Reagan? Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah. Oh, Philadelphia, okay. Mississippi, Ron. And, yeah. and this, but this, between these two, between David Gergen, um, 
insisting that Democrats nominate someone who's who's who passes muster with imaginary reasonable Republicans. Yeah. Who's not going to tax Peggy Noonan's carpet. Right. Well, who won't mention the past. Right. Who won't mention the shit they just did. Who will just don't. It's very, very, makes it very uncomfortable for you to talk about the fact that they're awful, evil, smelly human beings who want to destroy America. So just don't say that. Just pretend see, that that's this just is, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say something that I hope is not going to upset any of our listeners. Oh, we that ship has sailed, honey. I love Kamala Harris. I yeah. adore her. I think she'd make a great president if she's the nominee. I will enthusiastically support her. But part of me just wants so bad for her to be Attorney General of yeah. the United States. Yeah. I want someone like her. Yeah. I mean, she would hire someone like her to be yeah. Attorney General. And it's it's time to not forget the past. It's time for a vigorous unearthing of everything that has happened in yes. the past since yes. 2015 since 2015 Bearing, so you, can, it didn't you work. can start there we'll start at 2015 but we're going to unearth everything that happened and we're going to have real indictments and real jail time and we're going to have real justice for all these fuckers because it's it's not enough you know i know trump's going to try to pardon his whole family and his whole everything and mm -hmm. uh that doesn't mean that you can't start turning up dirt in Florida. There's a whole bunch going on out there regarding Florida and the elections and some Democratic state senator candidate. Uh, her whole campaign book was hacked by the Russians oh. and her opponent brought it to a debate. She it somehow got to the Republican opponent. Oh, golly. From Russia. How'd that happen? I mean, it's so corrupt. There's no reason the federal government can't go down there and just. No. Turn every voting machine upside down. Say, no, we're going to have paper ballots. This is a, this oh, is now the law. This is, paper ballots in every state or we give you no money for election support at all. This is why we had a, a Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. Right. New Voting Rights Act. Because and here's the deal. Everybody has a paper ballot and we scan them. And you, right. you have federal, you know, we're not going to tell you how to run your elections, but we are going to tell you which machines and which ballots you can use, yes. the type of ballot you can use. And there will be federal um, observers there. Yeah. Just yeah. like and the we'll UN put, we'll sends send federal troops. Right. We will send troops down to observe the elections. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. this is now a corrupt third world, you know, petty dictatorship. Right. And we right. have to ensure free and fair elections with blue helmets on the ground. Right. Um, right. Anyway, that's the master plan. The master plan is it's, it's always the same. It never varies. So it's not hard to see when they start to unroll it, when they start to roll it out. But it's on the one hand, David Gergen insisting Democrats must nominate someone who is acceptable to reasonable Republicans who simply do not fucking exist, except in his fevered ancient imagination. And Mike Murphy and, and Brian Williams pretending that the GOP was, <clears throat> excuse me, was just fine before Trump showed up. Everything was fine. Everything was yeah. just fine. Let's just not talk about it. And that's life after Trump. Now, I say screw the GOP. They're mm -hmm. unreachable. They might as well be living on the moons of Jupiter. You'll never reach them. Let them shuffle off to whatever unquiet grave they're headed towards. You, They're done you can't reach them stop trying <clears throat> but this sick beltway both siderist accommodationist cult that that dominates our media that has its foot on the throat of our media that that has to go and they mm -hmm. need to live in our world they need democratic validators to sit on the stage with them and nod to sell their snake oil yeah and that's yeah. where they're vulnerable I've, I've said this many many times the right is completely invulnerable they're completely shelled off. There's there's no way to reach them anymore. They're in the bunker, and that's where they're going to stay and die stupid. The middle has to come out and deal, because the whole point is you have to find a middle ground between both sides. They have to acknowledge the Democrats exist. They have to acknowledge Yeah, they that, have to have both sides. They have to have that side, right. And the minute they, they require liberal or Democratic validators to stand with them and sell their – that's when you stick the knife in. That's when yeah. you say, no, the problem is that Brian Williams has a fucking job on this network. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. Well, or or at the very least, you go as far as Chris Hayes did yeah. of calling Devin Nunez a snake oil salesman yeah. and a tornado of shit. Right. I mean, he didn't say shit, no. but, you know, that that this is this is uh, not something that we can compromise with because it's not based in anything real. And you could just see Brian Williams face so uncomfortable because like, don't oh, talk no, he, about he went. 
Don't talk about Republican <laughs> he went right friends that to way. Claire McCaskill at that yeah. point. He went right to Claire McCaskill. Claire McCaskill, tell us about the Senate rules. Right. That was that's how he dealt with it. Right. I mean, it, there is there is a training that goes on for these anchors. I mean, this was Chuck Dodd, you know, getting called out by a congressman to his face, and he just looks down at his paper and goes on to the next sentence. You know, now I have to talk to Claire McCaskill, and I'm going to ask her about how does the committee rules work, and you know that. That's how you deal with truth on the uh, on the stage. I, I am looking. Glass. I'm looking forward to Jake Tapper's show about gaslighting in the media. <laughs> no, they're really he's producing a show <laughs> on on how journalism is failing to deal with the for fact. real for real. Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper about okay. about how this is the, in the era of Trump. Of course, it's like let's not talk about anything before Trump. Let's not talk about how all the people yeah. on this fucking panel yeah. caused this problem. But that journalists are having a really hard time coping with the fact that there's a pathological liar and the party of traitors. Well, he's right. And I pray for him to do a really good job with yeah. that. I really do. So I I fear he won't, but I pray he will. Uh, hey, I heard Paul Krugman went full drift glass. He did. Uh, How was it for you, drift glass? <laughs> uh, he was OK. The, the paragraph before the one I'm about to read, he praises Bill Crystal. Um, he oh, says, you know, OK, th- there are people like Bill Crystal who uh, who. Uh, uh, we will never forgive for misleading us. No, Paul, lying, lying, lying. Us into <laughs> he lied us into the wrong fucking war. Lied us and into never war. missed a meal, never skipped a beat because he's wired in with the scumbags who run the media. He's wired in with your boss. That's what David Brooks at your paper still has a goddamn job. Um, but he said, uh, you have to admire their political courage. Now we really don't. They got caught on the wrong side of a scam. Now they're trying to find a way back into the party that they helped build and that, threw them out um but the last two paragraphs i gotta say were like right out of my playbook i will read them now in the voice of drip glass okay. well in the horse <laughs> yeah the horse you're, nasal you're, voice of you're having a little bit of a viral i am, problem. I yes. am. and, poor and thing. I, i'm poor feeling thing. i didn't get all my money's worth out of the flu shots we got this week blue gal <laughs> um, get your flu yeah. shots people I, uh, you okay. walk into the grocery store you take your pants down you think you know they would know what you're there for <laughs> Instead, he got arrested. I, you know no, that didn't I'm here happen. For, oh, oh it, and if this happens one more time, I'm going to stop shopping at Hy-Vee. <laughs> anyway, so this is Paul Krugman uh, in the voice of Drift Glass. Uh, but the modern GOP as a whole is overwhelmingly fanatical, corrupt, or both. Anyone imagining that the mountainous evidence of Trump's malfeasance will lead to a moral awakening or that Republicans will return to democratic program uh, political norms once Trump is gone, is living in a fantasy world. Even catastrophic electoral defeat next year probably wouldn't do much to change Republican behavior. The big question is whether America as we know it can long endure when one of its two major parties has effectively rejected the principles on which our nation was built. Which sounds a lot like yours truly from the Bush administration. Absolutely. This nation cannot endure (laughs) half Fox and half free. Half Fox and yep. half free, 2003, yep. Drift Glass, yep. right? <laughs> hey, let's do a news roundup. After you. Uh, I will start. Fiona Hill, the former White House advisor on Russia, opened her testimony before the impeachment inquiry by accusing Republican lawmakers of weaponizing falsehoods with the, quote, fictional narrative that Ukraine interfered in the 2016 pres- presidential election. She specifically called Devin Nunes' attempts to sow doubt that Russia interfered in the election, a myth, quote, perpetrated and propagated by the Russian security services, unquote. She added that it's, quote, beyond dispute, unquote, that, quote, Russia was the foreign power that systematically attacked our democratic institutions, unquote, in 2016. After months of delay... Senate Republicans have finally unveiled their Violence Against Women Act bill. Is that really what it's called, the Violence Against bl- Women Act? Because it certainly is violent it, it against women. It rolls back protections for Native women who face terrible violence, strips out LGBTQ protections, and a gun safety provision. So it is a typical Republican bill that is the opposite of what it's titled. Unbelievable. Trump met privately with Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg for an undisclosed dinner at the White House in October. The second such meeting between Trump and Zuckerberg in a month. And Facebook board member Peter Thiel also attended the dinner. I bet they talked about ad buys. Oh, I'm sure they talked about algorithms and code, you know, that that kind of cool stuff. Uh, The Democratic debate happened this week. It was fine. It was very well moderated. It was watched by almost no one. 
uh, which is a shame. It was drowned out by the impeachment hearing. That's my theory anyway. Like Scott Joplin playing in a tent next to John Philip Sousa at the World Columbian Exposition. Uh, Biden fucked up really bad. Tulsi Gabbard got her chestnuts roasted and none of it moved the needle on anything. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's partly that. I think it's also partly that uh, there are people like Tulsi Gabbard on the stage and people just don't have time for that. No. And I I understand that Tom Perez is in a very difficult situation, given what happened last time, that he wanted to avoid absolutely any talk or murmuring from anyone that he was being unfair or somehow favoring one candidate over another. Yeah. But uh, the uh, requirements for the fourth debate, you know, 90 yeah. days out are way too easy to, when you still have 10 people on the stage. Well, and if you uh, if you went over and uh, read the uh, Glenn Greenwald feed, which I did. Oh, no. That's probably what made me sick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> you would realize that it doesn't matter what Tom Perez does. Um yeah. that yeah. that Glenn and his goons and people like him are gonna scream that the fix is in, the fix yeah. is in, yeah. the fix yeah. is in no matter what happens. No matter yeah. what happens. Yeah. So yeah. Um is Glenn Greenwald in favor of Tulsi Gabbard being president she's, of the United States? She's States? she's that- very, very uh un, uh she's an anti war candidate with a lot of good credentials and uh-huh. Uh, there's a lot of pictures of her on Fox News and pictures of Glenn and Glenn. And oh, she's Carlton. gonna she's gonna have a full time job at sure. Fox News sure. after well after he does. 2018. So why yeah. wouldn't he? Yeah. Um. It, but it was that kind of well. Let's let's put this to the test. Let's see what really happens if you. Yeah. Oh, the the debate is shit, and MSNBC is a MSDNC is in the tank for you know whoever. Oh. So Lord. you know it. it okay. That's well, we I'm, I'm really looking for, you know, Tulsi Gabbard is the diamond and silk of Hawaiian congressmen. Yeah. So <laughs> she's going to be great on, you TV know, Aloha means Fox. hello yeah. and goodbye, blue cow. So <laughs> goodbye, Tulsi Gabbard. Goodbye. Apparently her, she, she's not running for reelection to the Congress oh. because oh. she raised $11. <laughs> oh, well. Her, oh, well. Her congressional campaign raised $11. That's okay. She has uh, a bright future on Fox News. She really does. Fox News. Uh-huh. She will never miss a meal. That's right. Uh, the House is now investigating whether Donald Trump lied to Robert Mueller based on the Roger Stone trial, yeah. which, by the way, Roger Stone's going to go to jail. Yeah. There's some more good news for you. Fun fact, Donald Trump did lie to Robert Mueller. Yes, he um, did. New- in writing. And that's the other thing. It's written testimony. Yeah. Oops. So uh, Oops. <laughs> that's right. you wrote it down. Wrote it down, asshole. Now we know. Uh, a New York state judge denied Trump's request to throw out a defamation lawsuit against former Apprentice contestant Summer Zervos. Zervos was among the more than 10 women who came forward during the 2016 presidential campaign and accused Trump of sexual assault and misconduct. And there are more since then, but that there were 10 before the uh, election, right? Yep. Uh, the U.S. broke off talks with South Korea over the cost of mil- the military alliance. Trump demanded that South Korea pay nearly $5 billion to station 28,500 U.S. troops in the country, a five-fold increase in uh, charging them for that. South Korea responded by agreeing to a bilateral defense agreement with China. So everything's going real good in Southeast Asia over there. Yeah. yeah. All of an infrastructure week, Blue Gal. Yeah, right. Uh, the Secret Service spent more than a quarter of a million dollars at Trump's private businesses in the first five months of his presidency, paying Trump's company an average of $2,000 per day. And thank you to the tireless lawyers and activists who filed FOIA requests, which are not easy to do, to get that information out. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, David Fahrenthold types out there who aren't yep. on TV, who don't have a New York Times or a Washington Post salary, and are working for nonprofits to to fight for the resistance, you know, unsung. And, and we should be very grateful for all of them. Gordon Sondland, speaking of people who have a paycheck, (laughs) the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, he's on his way back to Brussels. But before that, he testified that he and senior administration officials, quote, followed the president's orders, unquote, to work with Rudy Giuliani to pressure Ukraine into announcing investigations into Joe Biden and the discredited conspiracy theory that the country helped Democrats in the 2016 election. He testified that he, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, and Special Envoy Kurt Volker coordinated with Giuliani at the, quote, 
express direction of the President of the United States to, unquote, to pressure Ukraine into launching the investigations. Sondland also said he directly communicated the quid pro quo arrangement to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Sondland provided House impeachment investigators with emails and texts showing that the acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Rick Perry, and others were all aware that Trump conditioned a White House meeting for Zelensky on his willingness to launch investigations. They knew what we were doing and why, Sondland said. Everyone was in the loop. It was no secret. You know who else knew? Pence knew. Pence knew. Mike Pence knew. Yes, Sondland also testified that he told Mike Pence before his September 1st meeting with Zelensky that he had, quote, concerns that the delay in aid had become tied to the issue of the investigations. They all knew. Trump described Sondland's testimony as fantastic and said it proves he did absolutely nothing wrong. He also said he didn't know Sondland that well, but he seemed like a nice guy. This is his ambassador to the EU. Right. Never right? met him. Yeah. Uh, more like a coffee boy, really. A volunteer, <laughs> if you will. Uh, Congressman Sean Maloney did his did his sainted mother proud. Uh, he did. Uh, because he dribbled Gordon Sondland around the court for a bit before slam dunking him in front of millions of people. This was the only moment during the entire impeachment hearing when someone managed to wipe that smirk off of Sondland's face. And in our house, when Sean Maloney comes on the TV, it's a very Irish moment oh, God, for Drift yeah. Glass. Oh, God, yeah. Drift Glass, your people, Drift Glass, your people. Was, uh, I'm, I'll <laughs> claim him. I will claim him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cl- Sean Patrick Maloney. Uh-huh. You know he's got a brother that's a cop and a brother that's a priest. Oh, God, yeah. You know. <laughs> and his mother takes a nip a time or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She likes she likes uh, she likes the priest, but she'll settle for the congressman and the uh, and the cop. <laughs> the priest is her favorite son. Is oh that God, it? yeah. You know. <laughs> Don't tell her he's gay. <laughs> All right. Uh, as I said before, Roger Stone is going to prison. He is Tuesday this week. Donald Trump returned to his one of his lesser known go to lies. I I love this lie. Uh, quote. I was actually the man of the year in Michigan about 10 years before the election. If you can believe it, I don't believe it because, fun fact, there is no such award. And Donald Trump has previously claimed he got it five and six and seven years before the election. He can't. He keeps changing the year. Uh, for this, for, for what, in which he got this fake award that doesn't exist. And he just can't stop himself. He just can't do it. Once his in his rotting brain, once some fucked up thought gets lodged in there. He just can't stop believing it and can't stop repeating it. And and changing the year. Right. Or not. Yeah, okay. Because what the fuck? I the people I who follow me are basically, you know, marmots anyway. They they'll believe anything I say, so why bother being, you know, tidy about the facts? Rudy Giuliani's son Andrew gets ninety thousand seven hundred dollars of taxpayer money every year as qu- as here's th- here's his title sports liaison for the white house yes his job is coordinating professional athletes visiting trump and his relevant relevant experience is he's a golfer yeah <laughs> he's also rudy giuliani's son yeah so uh, all this stuff about hunter biden uh shut the fuck up yeah. You know, this is taxpayer money going to Rudy Giuliani's son, Andrew, to schedule sports teams for $90,700 a year. And now that the case against Donald Trump is as airtight as it could be, right on cue, Donald Trump's number one bug eating Renfield, Lindsey Graham, has decided that now is the perfect time to launch his very own probe of the Bidens, Burisma, and Ukraine. And he's the chairman of the House Judiciary Com- or Senate Judiciary Committee, so he can do that. He can do that. So he's going to launch his very own witch hunt to take the pressure off of the guy who, who has his balls in his sack. Uh, yeah. And Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, the top Ukraine uh, advisor, said, told the House Intelligence Committee that, quote, what I heard was inappropriate and I reported it out of a sense of duty because the connection to investigate a political opponent was inappropriate and improper. Mm -hmm. It was his duty to report. Yep. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty, uh, this is the first time in the history of Internet Kitties that the Kitty's Human has sent us a Google Translate voice of the Kitty's name. So here it is. 
Zoria Polonachnaya. So it's Zoria Polonachnaya. She was named after the youngest of the Zoria sisters in American Gods. You people are trying to kill me. I swear you people are trying to kill me. <laughs> Uh, the human uh, who sent her in, Zoria in, said, we have their permission to insert any Russian-Ukrainian jokes that we wish to. Uh, we talked about this, and um, we've decided that Zoria actually is Ukrainian, mm -hmm. but she moved here from Ukraine to get away from Rudy Giuliani. Right. And then she got here, <laughs> and what does she see every goddamn day? Rudy goddamn Giuliani is everywhere. Recorded live from Kiev. This is episode two, Rudy Giuliani podcast. Everybody clap. You can never <laughs> escape Rudy Giuliani. And of course, Zoria says da in Russian or tak in Ukrainian to freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Zoria, who, by the way, is a Ukrainian cousin of our two black yes. cats. And she's really, she's a glamour she kitty. Is. She really is beautiful. You can visit her at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. It is Thanksgiving next week. We are going to have some Science Fiction University podcasts out uh, we will see how things go as to whether we have a political podcast next week. In addition to that, uh, much depends on, you know, everything that's happening yes, here at yes. home. Uh, but uh, we want you all to know that we are very grateful for you. You are really, all, our podcast listeners mean so much to us. And uh, we will be bowing our heads, thanking uh, the higher power or whatever, uh, that you are a part of our lives. Thank you very much for being there. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. And please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are out doing their domestic political errands. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.